Greetings everyone, welcome back to another shader graph video. I'm Ramiz al the co-founder of Binary Lunar and the developer of Avocado. In today's video, we will show you how to create snow cover shader graph like the one you are seeing now on the screen. It will do something like snow dissolve. In addition, I'll show you how to create some particle effects related to the snow. I started a new 2D Unity project and imported some sprites to help us create this scene like the some trees and some trunks and a tank which drawn by my partner Lena. Like all previous shader graph videos, go to the window, package manager and install the universal IRP, universal rendering pipeline. I already installed it so I won't do again. Create rendering universal render pipeline, pipeline asset forward renderer and rename it to 2D renderer. Then assign that renderer as a default value for both graphics and quality in the project settings menu. Now let's create a new 2D sprite unlit graph. Name it snow cover shader. Before we start building our shader graph, let's make our scene look beautiful by adding a background and uh, a tree with its trunk. I'll provide all the links to the sprites we used in the tutorial in the description below. We separated the leaves from the trunk because we wanted the snow to be accumulated only on the leaves. The main idea of the snow cover depends on the dissolve shader graph which I created previously so if you didn't watch that yet I recommend that watching that I provided the link in the top right corner of this video, right now you can click on it. Let's start by creating a property which represents our main sprite, name it main texture and also set the reference exactly to underscore main text which will detect any texture of the sprite automatically when you place the shader graph on it or the material on it. Drag the property to the shader graph and link it with sample texture 2D. Now add simple noise node and set the scale to 25 on X. Then add step node, which will represent what it takes to transition between 0 and 1 to reach full alpha. And in our case, it will represent the visible area we want of the noise. Then create new property, name it snow amount. It will represent the area of snow we want or how much the sprite is covered with snow and set the reference to that to underscore snow amount because we will control that by code later set the default value to 0 0.5 so we can see how the sprite will look when it's half covered by the snow now let's multiply the step node with the alpha of our tree because we only want to see that noise inside the tree itself then multiply that again with the colors of the tree. Now we got the part of the tree which is visible when it covered by snow. Let's group all the current node into a group named base sprite. Now let's get one minus node and link it to the alpha of the covered tree. That will give us the opposite alpha. Then we need to multiply it with the tree alpha again. So we get the opposite alpha within the tree itself that will represent where is the snow cover on the tree. Now we need to apply a snow texture to that alpha. So let's create sample texture 2D, then create a new property and name it snow texture 2D texture property, name it snow texture and link it to the sample texture 2D, then multiply the alpha we got with that texture to get the snow on the tree. Let's gather all the new nodes and group them into a new group called snow part. Now simply to get the tree covered with snow we add the snow part to the base sprite part to get full tree covered with snow and link that to the color node at the sprite on the master node. Save the shader graph, return back to the scene, then create new material, name it snow material, then drag the snow shader graph onto the material, then drag the material onto the tree leaves. 
as you can see now we can control the snow cover amount by adjusting the snow amount value between 0 and 1 now let's improve our shader graph by adding an outline to the snow texture let's create an add node and add an, a small amount which is 0 0.1 to the snow amount then do a step again that will create an extra area of alpha which allows us to create the outline so as you can see now we got extended area of alpha more than the previous one in the step above then we can subtract the step we got from the step before we adding the small amount to get the outline you can control the thickness of the outline by controlling the x value if you wanted to color the snow outline, you can create a new property, snow color, outline color, then just multiply it with the outline we got. Then multiply the outline we got with the alpha of the tree because we only want to show the outlines inside the tree itself. Then finally add the outline we got with the final node, then connect it to the color at the master node. To keep everything organized and clean, we can combine all the nodes related to the outline into outline group now let's try to apply this shader graph to another sprite which is another tree and see what we will get you will see that we getting the same location of snow on both trees and that because we are using the same material and also because we using the same parameters for each tree so let's go back to the shader graph and add controls which allows us to offset the position of snow also control the scale of it so let's go back to our shader graph create new property vector one snow scale and link that to the scale in the simple noise node then add tiling and offset node and link it to the uv of the simple noise and create a new vector two to control the offset of the tiling and offset node link it with the offset and now we have control over where the snow can be located as you can see now we can control the scale of the snow also where it's located by adjusting the offset but to, to have a different look for each tree we need to create another material so let's create a new material, let's name it snow2, drag the shader graph into it, then drag the new material to the second tree. Now we can control each tree separately from each other. Now our shader graph is ready to be controlled using code, so let's create a new script called snow controller. In this code we will need a public float to control the snow amount and another float to control the speed of the snow cover what is the time or speed needed to reach the final snow cover also we will need a public pool just to check if it's snowing or not because we will use that pool to control the transition from no snow to snow cover and we need also a private material let's name it mat and set a reference to it to the material on our sprite and on update let's create uh, an if if we click the a button on the keyboard we set is snowing to true and if we click the s button we set the snowing to false then create two new function one start snow and one stop snow and we will call start snow when is snowing is true and we will call stop snow when is snowing is false there is a point that can make some confusion that the snow amount value 1 means there is no snow and 0 means fully covered with snow I should have named the snow amount to something like the original photo visibility percentage so now if the snow amount is higher than 0 0.35 I, I chose 35 not 0 because I don't want the sprite to be fully covered with snow I want it to be like 70, uh, 65% covered and the rest to show the original sprite then we deduct from the snow amount over time using the speed 
till we reach 65% snow coverage and we pass to start snow the parameter covering speed for the stop snow we do the opposite so if the snow amount is less than 1 we keep increasing the snow amount value over time using the speed till we reach the amount 1 which means there is no snow at all and finally we control the snow amount in our material using set float method which controls the snow amount node in our shader graph so make sure that the reference in the shader graph is the same as in this function underscore snow amount save the script and assign it to the second tree too then hit play when we click A the snow appears when we click S the snow disappears and that's what we wanted to spice things up let's create a snow particle system and we will use the edge shape to make the snow fall from the top of screen I'll speed up the process because it's a simple thing to do Now we can control the particle system emission rate by accessing the particle system emission module and assigning its rate over time to our new public float snow rate. So in start snow function we can add a new if. If the snow rate is less than 500 particles then we keep increasing that rate over time using the rate increase speed to reach the 500 particles to reach the full snow rate and the opposite on stop snow if the snow rate is more than zero we keep decreasing the snow rate till we reach zero which means there is no snow at all in the scene let's finalize the scene by adding two additional trees creating two new materials for them and adjusting their parameters of offset and scale to give a different look And Lena provided me with this cute tank to show you how we can easily change the texture of the snow to do other effects like maybe an ice. So we will apply an ice texture instead of snow texture to this tank. Just create new material for the tank, let's name it tank ice maybe. Then drag the shader graph into that material and drag that material to the tank and just change the, te the snow texture to ice texture. Now just make sure that the snow controller script has been attached to all the trees and the tank. Also don't forget to assign the snow particle system to that script. You can make variation to the covering speed to make a tree get covered before another. Also maybe set the lowest speed of covering to the tank because ice will take a longer time to form and finally to make sure that the snow particles are visible above all previous layers we can set a sorting group to it and assign it to layer 3 on the default layer and that's it we created a nice snow cover shader graph in addition to its related particle effects I hope you enjoyed watching my video and to benefit from it in your projects Thanks to you and thanks to our Patreons, Benjamin Benji, Jack Crystal, Rick Jakobowski and Mohamed Aiden. Looking forward to see you soon in the next video.